Caner Universe, it's Caner Tip Tuesday. Today we're looking at the fallacy of testing canes for self-defense. There's a right way to do it, but the current trend right now is, well, uh, we'll get into it, but first of all, a, a warm welcome uh, to all. Go ahead, listen, if you, if you love the content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so that you don't miss any future content. And do this, avail yourself of the free resources. The most important one, hands down, is that no cost cane clarity call. Text the letter CCC to the number on the screen, and in less than 24 hours, we will be on a phone call with you learning about what it is that interests you about the cane, why you're even why are you even watching this, where you are in the timeline of your training. Even if you're an instructor, you want to learn how to better serve your audience or you're brand new, doesn't matter. That call is going to save you tons of time, funds, and frustration in getting it right from the onset before you purchase or place any orders for anything. And then you have several Facebook groups that are now open to the public. Just read the description, request entry. They will let you right in. So... This whole thing that's, that's going on that you, you've seen, you probably have seen this. So, cane manufacturers may come in and they want to show you the beating that the cane can take, and somehow that is supposed to translate into that cane being effective for self protection. And, and some of you that know me that have been um, following me now uh, for a while, you probably already know where I'm, I'm going to come you know, where, where I'm coming from, but uh, I do want to point some things out. Uh, first of all, there there is no cane, no cane in and of itself. The cane is nothing. This is a tool. It's sitting there. I can lean it up against here and I can say, get them, you know, and, and nothing happens, right? I'm, I am the one you have to worry about with anything that you put in my hand. That That's the goal of training, but let me backtrack a little bit. Yes, there is an ACSD when through a period of time, um, whether you are purchasing from us a Raven, the aircraft grade aluminum, there were things that we did with that concept of, of a cane to make it a better cane for caners. It's a cane that is designed by a caner for caners. And yes, there's testing. We know what it can withstand. We know when it um, what happens. It will not crack. It'll it'll uh, bend, but you can still be effective with a bent tool. How do we know these things? Because there's a way of testing that. And it's not by whacking an inanimate object. That is a demonstration of what could happen. But I'm, I'm going I'm to point out where the fallacy is there. <clears throat> I'm also not referring to, you know, uh, our sister company, Cane Masters, who develops hardwood canes um, and the integrity of those canes. So there, does that matter? Yes, it, it, it does matter. But please listen to me here. You choose that cane based on the cane strategy to sit there and pick up a cane, hit an inanimate object, right? Hard, uh, whatever it is, whatever you're, you're, you're striking with the intent to see how much punishment the cane can take before it withers and somehow tie that into self-protection is, it's silly, it's silly. And there is no direct correlation. And the reason for that is because self-protection is dynamic. Whether the cane can withstand or how much a cane can withstand upon impact, when you're going, the more trained you are, the better trained you are. So this goes for ACSD, for cane flow, for sobrevivencia. The better trained you are, the least contact you're going to have to make against something else that might um, up damage your cane. The better, the more skilled you are, the least that's going to happen because you're not going to go force on force. We don't teach you to do that. Got it. The other thing is that an inanimate object just sits there. It doesn't strike back. It doesn't move. It doesn't have any reflexes. So to sit there and say, it's like, you know how they have these slapping, you know, championships and, you know, you sit there, it's my turn. Boom. I whack you and wait, see who can knock each other out. Somehow correlating that to self-protection has nothing to do with that. Um, so you're going to choose your king. If you're a sober of Evansia practitioner, um, it's not a shaft art. You're not going to go out there. This is not what primarily what you're striking with. It's a tip art. 
And it's so movement-based, you're just not there for the incoming attack. And the whole idea is not to have to make contact in the first place. Got it? So it's okay if the intent is to see how, when, if you find yourself in a self-defense situation, do you go in there thinking, well, gosh, I'm going into this. Let me see how much punishment my cane can take. Just think about that for a second. Stop and think about that for a second. And you'll see that it doesn't correlate. When is it important? Well, incoming attack, and I have to put the tool between myself and the incoming attack? Absolutely. But even the way you do that and the positioning is to knock down that shot and dissipate the force of the blow. You're not going, you're not doing this, right? You're not also coming in and striking when you go to strike. It's not to see how much damage your cane can take. It's to incapacitate. And if you're an ACC, you're intelligent about these things. You take, you take law into consideration, everything else. If you follow me in particular and anything that I'm associated with, we even talk about not destroying individuals. We have no interest in doing that whenever possible. Destroy the attack instead of the attacker. And for that, there is no one cane that is associated with. And I bring this about because sometimes I laugh and people mean well. They mean well, but they just don't know. They'll say things, you know, when I'm going to a bad part of town, you know, I have to go through there. I'm going to take my raven cane as opposed to one of my... And I laugh at those things, right? Like you're taking a bazooka. None of that has anything to do. What you can do at any given moment under the duress of a self-protection situation is going to be entirely tied into your training. That's what's going to take over more so than any tool. Okay, so, and again, don't misunderstand. Yes, we've put our canes through a testing process to see the integrity when you're going cane on cane so that they don't, well, American made canes, I already told you, either ACSD cane masters right at the very top. By the way, two other things. Um, you don't need any one particular cane to go through, a, to get started with training. You don't. In ACSD, it's you're going to get started with a power shot template and you're going to need the horn and the crook, right? This, what the lay person refers to as this J handle, you're going to need it between the end of week number two, beginning of week number three, when you start using this for handling and kinesthetic training. But the rest of the time, even a straight up and down stick will, will do. So to hold off on your training or to say, oh, I can't do this training because I don't have a particular uh, a cane, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Um, get moving. You know, and if, if it has a horn and a crook and the, the measurement from here to here is three to five inches, you're good. You're good. We don't tell you to go out and start beating things and doing all that. And please don't test drugstore variety canes. We don't tell you to do that, um, you know, on an anabology and then say, oh, gosh, it wilted. Yeah, it's not designed for contact. It's a medical device. It wasn't designed for that. Wait till your, your cane gets here. And the waiting game is real right now. Any wooden cane, um, you know, can take minimum of 30 days uh, to ship and get to you. Raven canes, when they're in, in, in stock, they ship really quick. But otherwise, yes, you also have to wait for those. If you're in a hurry, then don't do it. Don't, don't order uh, either one from either one, you know, at, at least from us. Um, and King Masters will pretty much tell you the same. Uh, that's the current state. Now, when you receive your cane right across the board, right, it was well worth the wait because it's something that you're going to have forever and ever. Amen. But please don't let that get ever in the way of your training. Okay, training saves lives. All right, that's today's segment. Next week, I'll demonstrate what I just said. I'll put it and, and give you a visual as I like to do so that you can see um, the, why we're so movement-based, all right? Listen, there's still, in, in a couple of um, weeks, is Winter Cane Immersion, and we're offering the online version because in-person is already closed, um, but you can go ahead um, and, and give us a call directly, 800-289-8188, if you've never been to an immersion before. The recordings are going to be included, and there's tremendous value in that. Just saying, right, if you like somebody of you being and you like that ACSD cane in empty hand, you may want to avail yourself of that. I'm Joe Robina for American Cane Self-Defense. Thanks for watching. Keep caning. Stay safe.